Welcome to the High Rise Podcast, presented by Headset, the leading data and analytics company for the cannabis industry. Emily, we're still in October here, but Oktoberfest is well over. And, and I don't know if I told you this story, but we had an Oktoberfest on our street. It's an annual tradition. It hadn't happened for a couple of years, and it's, it's kind of become a big deal. I mean, there's a full-on tent. People are dressed up. There's a ton of beer. It kind of turned into a bit of a night for me where, um, you know, one of those situations where you're, you're just talking to neighbors, you have the big beer glass in your hand, the big Oktoberfest glass, and, you know, you manage to drink it all. And then all of a sudden a neighbor is like, oh, you need more beer. And they'll run back with a whole nother one. And you kind of lose track of how much uh, you're consuming. Well, that was my experience. And I remember it was on a, like a Saturday night and my Sunday was just gone. Uh, <laughs> But it was it was a great time, but I bring it up because uh, Oktoberfests, I think, in the near future are going to be crazy everywhere, well, particularly in Germany, with this news today. So, you know, I know that uh, Germany's been in the news for cannabis over and over. We've all seen the headlines about, you know, Germany thinking about legalizing, talking about legalizing, doing something. And today, I think something uh, pretty concrete came out as far as adult use legalization and, and what it means and uh, some high level guidance on on what this is going to look like. So I thought we could uh, chat about it. Yeah. I mean, hops and uh, cannabis are not that far apart. So they both have terpenes. They're both uh, aromatic. It's great. So what's going down in Germany? So what is going down in Germany? So they have signaled that they're going to legalize the purchase of up to 30 grams of cannabis. So and so I think just over an ounce of cannabis for adult use. Now, the thing is, this is early, early stages, and there's not a ton of details, but the federal health minister, Carl Lauterbach, made the announcement and then did a Q&A. And there's a great thread I found on Twitter from uh, an individual, Alfredo Pasquale, that we'll link to in the show notes that kind of goes into detail because it was a, um, a presentation and then a Q&A. And uh, I believe in German, and so he was translating for everybody. So there's a lot of a lot of highlights in here that I think are, are pretty interesting. So obviously you have the the 30 grams, which is a, a big number. It looks like sales will be restricted to special stores. What that looks like, uh, we don't know. I think another thing that's interesting is that uh, they're talking about a THC limit, and I know that's like slippery slope and kind of scary when we think about. Uh, THC limits, but they're talking about THC limits for 18 to 21 year olds. I mean, competing against the illicit market and all that, I think will still be a challenge when people can get more. But I, I don't think it's a necessarily such a bad thing because a lot of science uh, has shown that you know 25 and older is when you should really you know be consuming because of the way our brains develop. So you know, looking at low low limits there, I don't think that that's terrible. You know, certainly they're trying to. Uh, remove the black market, you know, get it out of the, out of illicit hands and into like a regulated market for all the benefits that we talk about all the time, right? Underage purchases, safety, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the THC limit is part of that. Another thing they mentioned is like th- no formats like edibles yet. So, you know, again, very, very early innings. The Bloomberg article uh, that talks about it says that uh, the health minister, uh, Carl Lauterbach, projected that legalization could take effect in the first quarter of next year. But reading this thread and the Q&A, it looks like, I mean, when I read that, I was like, they're going to have legal cannabis for like New York. Like that's crazy to go from zero to a hundred so fast. I know the Germans are efficient, but I mean, that's like (laughs) extremely efficient. And so it looks like the draft law is going to be introduced at earliest in Q1 of next year, if all goes well. They said it's not realistic that the law would be approved by summer 2023. It's too complex. It says if all goes well, uh, including the exchange with the EU Commission, which I'll talk about in a second, legalization is possible in 2024. So Bloomberg, uh, I was like, wow, next quarter, what is happening? But 2024 is more realistic. So if you're planning a, a trip to Bavaria for Oktoberfest, aim for 24. I think that's the year to go because the stores may be open by that point. Last thing I'll say is this whole thing really hinges on EU support from the European Commission that needs to review the proposal. And he was really clear in his comments, apparently, about about this, that um, 
the EU needs to be okay with this. Uh, someone asked about uh, Amsterdam and the EU is okay with that. And he said, it's a very different thing with Amsterdam where it's like, it's not like regulated framework around legal selling. It's like a, don't look over here. Don't worry about it. You know, kind of a tacitly approved thing that goes on in Amsterdam, right? It's like, quasi legal right there's no like legal growers like the cannabis just magically appears at these coffee shops right that's just how it works over there so he says it's not the same and it's there like plan a and people are like well what happens when if the eu commission says no and he's like well there there's no plan b you know we're running with plan a assuming that this will be the case so you know it really does hinge on on the support here uh from the commission and then you had something on some standards right well, yeah, because so far with the medical market that exists, it, it has it's existed on the rails of the EU GMP certified facilities and practices. And that's a certain for anyone who doesn't know, it's kind of a certain standard that's used for pharmaceutical facilities and distribution channels. And it seemed like it was it, there was some wisdom to that, because why not leverage a system that already exists? And so then you saw operators in like Portugal or in Colombia, who were cultivating, they were setting it up and making sure they were getting established in EU GMP certification. So I am curious about what standards they're going to put around this for an adult use market, if any. But it does seem like the Germans, they're efficient, but I think they're also, they're analytical and they take time to figure things out in terms of how they want to implement it. And so I agree with 2024. On the EU commission piece, I think, I don't foresee that it will be a massive holdup, but there is some really interesting stuff going on. I mean, the geopolitical situation in the world right now is really strained. And so it is interesting to think about what will happen with the, the commission. And I do think many of us have thought that if Germany establishes a program, then potentially that creates a pathway for other countries to have a program. And because, I mean, Europe is very, there are borders, obviously, but they feel more semi-permeable than, you know, if you have to travel across an ocean to get to a country like the EU is the EU and it has allowed for transition through the continent. And so I don't know, I'm just, I'm curious to see what happens here, but I'm glad to see it. It feels very real, this news. It doesn't feel like it's just lip service, but I do think the timeline that was cited is far from practical. So, and by the way, like, God, if they pull it off for Q1 of 2023, amazing. <laughs> and we'll just keep going from there. And then we'll have legal cannabis in Germany, like you said, before we even have it in New York or in some parts of the US. So it'll be interesting. It definitely is interesting. It was wild to see the headline. I, I was slightly dismissive at first because, you know, Germany's in, in the news all of the time. A lot of organizations have investments there, you know, thinking about Europe for, for almost as long as I can remember. So this seems a little more tangible, a little more concrete, like there are things that are happening here. And 24, they can pull it off. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it'll it'll be here before we know it. And hopefully we have, hopefully we can beat them to the punch, right? With the U.S. and uh, federal change, um, you know, in the next handful of months here. Uh, one thing I was thinking about, too, is I was just reading about how Europe is feeling the impact of uh, the core being so tight in terms of, you know, the cost of gas and everything. They're feeling it more acutely than we are, which I feel like is a little bit of a canary in the coal mine about what how we may be feeling soon as a, a country. And in fact, I, I saw the consumer confidence is the lowest it's been in three months, I think, as of this week. But Europeans are starting to exhibit trends that suggest they're already living essentially in a recession. Like they're, this was a, this was kind of sad. Like they're shopping for like day old food or like they're, but they're staying home more. They're not going out. They're canceling travel plans. As we all know, cannabis is does well when people are home more. And I was actually just watching this trend this morning. I was reading an article on Bloomberg about how millennials are going out to date less, which has made me really sad because the, the cost of going out now is so high. And I was just like, oh, that's, like that, that's a bum out to begin with. But Americans are now starting to exhibit those same trends. But I was just thinking for Germany, maybe that is a further reason to expedite getting legalization done if people are kind of staying home more and not going out and there are ways for them to enjoy their lives at home. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it'll, it'll certainly be fun to watch as this develops and it sounds, you know, very high level, you know, no format, you know, interesting formats like edibles. I mean, just 
30 grams of flour, pretty basic, what the stores look like and, and all of that to be determined. So I'm sure plenty of plenty of things to to track. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, future Oktoberfest, this will be a part of it, uh, just like, you know, pretzels and beer. So more to come on that. But uh, I want to kind of transition to a, a recent report we did over here at Headset. So, you know, in October, tail end of October, we've got Halloween right around the corner. And then we're in, you know, Thanksgiving territory, Christmas, it's all coming up, right? So we, uh, we looked at some of the data and we published a report all around holiday shop. You know, it's something we, we all know. I mean, we're all, you know, holiday shopping in all sorts of categories, but what does it mean for cannabis? And the reason Q4 is so notable is that uh, five of the top 11 sales days that, that we see here happen in Q4. The number two sales day is what's you know been dubbed as Green Wednesday. So the day before Thanksgiving, where everyone loads up on product before they go and visit family. Day number three and the highest grossing sales is the Black Friday. So the day after Thanksgiving. Do you know what day number one is? Not Q4. Is it? It's not in Q4. Oh, it's July. It's July 4th. No, no, no. The number one sales day of cannabis. Oh. April, obviously, April. Yeah, 20th. obviously, 420. Four exactly. I don't know why I'm exactly. saying that. But the, the 4th of July weekend is a big weekend. That is a big one. Absolutely a big one. And then back to kind of Q4, Christmas is, uh, or the 23rd. So the day before Christmas Eve, number yes. five. And I was like, well, what's number four? It's Labor Day. Yes. It's number four. So yeah, kind of, you know, you can see it's all concentrated around these holidays. Uh, and then, of course, you have 420. And you have, you know, Labor Day, you have uh, you know, 4th of July, those those mm -hmm. days stand out as well. But there's some interesting things that happen during this time, particularly like different formats or form factors. So you called out beverages and edibles. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I was just really impressed when I was going through this report. First of all, I thought it was a great report and everybody should take a look at it, especially as the holiday season is quickly upon us. But and they go through yeah, the, the top sales days, but then the category growth that I thought was so interesting is, for example, on beverage. Now, it's a small category, and it's, so it's off a low base, but there's 111% growth on the category on Green Wednesday. And, you know, it is just interesting to think about how people might be bringing that as a contribution to the Thanksgiving event, just like you and I actually had talked about for 4th of July, bringing it to like a picnic or something like that, because beverage is a more socially accepted form factor of consumption. And it's also kind of a neat thing to bring to a party or to a gathering as like a contribution to the event. I thought edibles also showed a pretty interesting increase at uh, about 87%. That may be because it's a little more discreet. Again, may also be some gifting around that or bringing it to the event to share. But then what I thought was most interesting too about this is that just across the board, even the lower categories, even down to tinctures and sublinguals, they even see a 55% growth that day on Green Wednesday. So there's a lot of really interesting things happening there. So it, it is right across the category, a huge day for people as they're preparing to spend time with friends and family. Um, the other thing that I thought was, um, there was something else I was going to say about that category growth. But uh, I mean, flour, obviously, coming off even a high base, the 61% growth. So there's a lot of consumption going on, on or purchasing going on on Wednesday. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and great points about beverages and edibles. And, you know, anecdotally, I've, I've done that, you know, br brought beverages to, to social gatherings, not necessarily on, on Thanksgiving, but just a few weeks ago uh, to a neighbor's and uh, people appreciate it. You know, it's unique uh, to a lot of people, especially those that aren't like the core consumer. They're not up to speed with what's going on. And so, yeah, I, I'm guilty of it. What's interesting, <laughs> guilty, <laughs> what's interesting of the that analysis on, on the beverages and edibles, I mean, it, every category certainly has growth. You know, flour, I think, grew like 60%. And, and that, that attributes for a massive dollar amount because it's such a large share of, of sales. But beverages, we look at this kind of every year. And, um, you know, in 2020, we looked at the data. So these numbers were, you know, 21 because mm -hmm. we don't have 22 yeah, data, obviously. <laughs> um, but in 2020, beverages and edibles, beverages were up 89% and edibles were up 81% which is you know pretty interesting especially because 2020 it's so hard to to remember it feels like a long time ago but this is early kind of pandemic still and that's when shopping you know a lot of a lot of cannabis consumption a lot of shopping behaviors happen i mean there's a huge spike in april and it kind of you know 
tapered off, but there's still that build, right? And that's why so many year over year growth, it's, it's all kind of conflated because of the, the pandemic. So it was, you know, 89% and 81% beverages and edibles respectively there. And then in 21, 111% and 87%. So even more improvement. And the category has gotten even larger since 2020. So you're seeing even stronger growth there. So I think for this year, you know, I would guess that we're going to see even better numbers, even stronger numbers. The, the beverage category, the edible categories, you know, just getting more mature, more and more, you know, interesting products are being developed. You know, so we'll see. I mean, the, the base, as the base gets bigger, it's harder to see that kind of growth. But I don't know. I think this year we could see some of those same trends. I'd be surprised if it, uh, you know, wasn't in line with that kind of triple digit growth there um, that we're seeing from last year. Yeah, I think one of the categories I'm going to watch to see what happens on Green Wednesday is the pre-roll category because it's now so varied and there's like it comes in like dog walkers is a really cute tin and like you can bring it and you have multi packs and all this stuff. So I'm curious to see what happens in that category from a growth perspective this year. Yeah, all this is you know predicated on some discounting. Discounts were up about 27% in our 2020 analysis. So that certainly contributes to it. But, you know, it's more transactions and it's bigger transactions, even though with all this discounting, people are putting more in their basket than usual. They're buying more frequently. Uh, Thanksgiving has some interesting sales patterns we have in this report that's pretty cool to look at where time of day and sales, mm -hmm. like compared to an average Thursday. I mean, it's, it's kind of intuitive, but there's like a, a large amount of sales earlier in the day on a Thursday than an average Thursday, you know, an average Thursday, you can imagine a lot of sales are happening in the evening, right after work, people commuting home, you know, are just out of work and able to go, go shopping. But with Thanksgiving, it's definitely front loaded. So you just, you can see all that in our reports available on our website, always interesting to kind of watch this stuff. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what the data looks like. And I'm sure, you know, post Thanksgiving, we'll publish some data tidbits uh, on our social channels that kind of highlight some of these these interesting things because we'll know, you know, sooner than later, you know, how this all looks, but you planning on bringing anything to Thanksgiving? That's a good question. My sister and I usually have mimosas while we're cooking, um, <laughs> cooking. I use that phrase lightly with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I was thinking about ordering some, some wonder to bring over because I know my uh, brother-in-law really likes it. And, um, and I like it. So, but it's, it's a nice gift to bring also to your hosts so that even if you don't all consume it that day, then they have it afterwards to enjoy. What about you? I don't know. Maybe I always, you know, go uh, for Thanksgiving to uh, the Vickers, which are my, my co-founder, uh, his house. And so as a co-founder, he generally has plenty of, of weed. So <laughs> 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 we'll see, we'll see. But, um, you know, I'm sure, uh, I think if I were uh, to do something, yeah, like a low dose beverage is is nice, right? It's a perfect, simple thing that you can consume and still kind of be lucid and, and so on. I'm still pretty much a lightweight. So, you know, that's always nice. And especially with other guests there, right, that are also maybe have less experience just to have, have something like that. So we'll see. Uh, we don't have Wonder up here uh, in, in the, the Pacific Northwest or in Seattle, unfortunately. But uh, I think there's some comparable stuff that I might look to. Thanks for listening to the High Rise Podcast, presented by Headset. For more information on Headset, visit headset.io.